السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام قال النبي سجدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المرء مع من حب أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام غاث يا ضم بمني بسر السماء مدد قبل أيدي مدد كعب إيمان مدد يا صاحب الناهور كل ناصر في السمع والأعضاء وحسن الباصر وبطول عمر لا بعمر قاصر يا مجمع الخيرات عبد القادر رضي الله عنه. Respected سادات الضم علماء كرام my dear elders and brothers الحمد لله Allah Ta'ala has blessed again with this day Jumu'ah. We are here to perform our obligatory salah. May Allah Ta'ala accept this gathering and make this a means for our salvation through the shafa'at of Rasul-i Kareem, Ra'uf al-Rahim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers, as we all know, this is the month Rabi'ul Akhir. And alhamdulillah, everywhere the remembrance of the awliya is being held, especially the remembrance of Qutub al-Aqtab, Ghawth al-Aghawath, Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. And alhamdulillah, usually, whenever I get the opportunity to speak, I try to focus on the evidences for our practices, such as when we say, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, assist us by the powers Allah has bestowed upon you, we try to give evidences for that. When we say, when we recite the Mawlid of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which the miracles occurred during the blessed birth of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned and other miracles are mentioned. So we try to prove in light of the Quran and the Ahadith that these things are permissible. Similarly, when we talk about the awliya and their powers, I usually try to give evidences that these are possible and these are in accordance with of the Holy Quran and the Ahadith of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So basically, my focus always used to be that I try to give evidences so that the youth who in any way got confused on this so that they get a chance to rethink about it, to rectify on this and to get the things cleared in order to be on the proper path, the Aqeedah of Ahlus Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. But today, I thought to mention a few incidents related to Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ali. Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ali, who was he? Was he a Sahabi? No. He was born as per the narrations in the Hijri 470. That is after almost 460 years, Nabi Kareem Ra'uf al-Rahim sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam left this world. And he was not from the Sahabi as well, obviously, because he came later on. But Allah ta'ala gave him such excellence that the noble Salihin, the awliya who lived before him after the time of Sahaba, they had mentioned on the excellence of this person, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ali, in front of their followers. Such as if you refer to the history of Sayyiduna Junaid al-Baghdadi Rahmatullahi Ali, who is regarded as a great wali of Allah, and he is from the Grand Sheikh of Sayyiduna Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. So long before the blessed birth of Sayyiduna Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani and who was Sayyiduna Junaid Baghdad? If we go through the incidents, he was regarded as the wrestler, bodybuilder of his time and well known. He was very well known on his capability. And there was, there was no one in his city to defeat him. He was such powerful. So once, the ruler announced that whoever is going to defeat Junaid Baghdadi, 
he will be rewarded with huge amounts with huge wealth and obviously no one was willing to come forward to fight with sayyiduna junaid baghdadi rahmatullah but suddenly a person appeared who was very weak and apparently when we look at that person he is unable to fight with such a huge person who is well known for his uh, wrestling but yet it was the announcement from the ruler so when the challenge was accepted the ruler had to organize a gathering where all the people would come to observe this incident that how the fight is going to occur a day was fixed place was fixed when that time appeared they both were together now junaid baghdad and that weak person now in wrestling there is a method that before they start their job they just hold each other's shoulder to discuss something or to understand something there is a method in it so while doing that this person said oh junaid i know very well that i am a weak person in front of you i know very well that i am unable to defeat you and definitely if i fight with you i am going to be defeated but oh junaid there is a reason behind me coming for this i am in very much difficulty my family is in a very difficult situation and you know i am from the genealogy of rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam i am from ahlul bayt i am from the descendant of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh junaid i know i can't defeat you but i know if you sacrifice yourself today for the sake of ahlul bayt of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam i guarantee you that on the day of judgment you will be granted the shafaat of my grandfather rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayyiduna junaid baghdadi rahmatullahi alayhi was astonished he had to think twice thrice about this offer that if he is losing here what would the world say what would the people say that junaid such a popular person of baghdad he got defeated from such a weak person people will talk bad about me but on the other hand if i am giving this chance to him if i accept the defeat that i am getting the intercession of rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he had two choices what to be adopted ultimately he decided to adopt the shafaat of rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam because this was a word given by of uh, ahlul bayt for a person from the ahlul bayt of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam so when the fight began junaid purposely came down and he showed that he got defeated now everyone passing through junaid oh junaid we thought you such a great man such a capable person such a powerful person well known person you got defeated from such a weak person oh junaid shame on you oh junaid shame on you. this way people started talking about junaid he was in a sad situation but he had a hope <coughs> of the shafaat of rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he will be blessed in the court of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was in a very distressed mood and when he went to his bed out of grief or out of distress when he had a sleep allah akbar allah has given such powers to his habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he himself says i can see all whatever has happened and going to happen until qiyamah as i see my palm nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam states so everything is apparent in the eyes of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had witnessed this as well and junaid baghdadi rahmatullahi alayhi once he slept he dreamt nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the scholars say it was such that rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh junaid you assisted a person from my family oh junaid do not wait for the qiyamah wilayat is granted for you from now onwards sayyid junaid baghdadi rahmatullahi alayhi wa sallam woke up in the morning the situation was the great awliya of his time were at the house of sayyiduna junaid baghdadi rahmatullahi alayhi in order to seek the blessings so a scholar a wali an arif like junaid baghdadi rahmatullahi alayhi one was once he was 
in seclusion. And the only of Allah, they always used to be in seclusion. They are engrossed in the remembrance of Allah. Suddenly, he started proclaiming, O oh, Abdul Qadir, your feet is on my neck, on my shoulders. O oh, Abdul Qadir, your feet are on my neck. The people, the followers of Junaid Baghdadi, rahmatullahi alayhi, who were surrounding him, they were astonished to see such a different mode of Sayyiduna Junaid Baghdadi. One Sayyiduna Junaid Baghdadi, rahmatullahi alayhi, came out of that ecstasy mood. His students, they asked, O oh, Sayyidi, we saw something different in you. That you suddenly proclaim that, O oh, Abdul Qadir, my feet, your feet are on my shoulders as well. Then he said, there will be a time. Now this is going to happen after about 100 years. There, there will be a time that a person from Jilan, who will be born in Jilan, Iran, and he will be settled in Iraq, Baghdad, and Allah will give him such prominence that once he will climb on the member of the Jamia Masjid of Baghdad and make this announcement, Qadami hadihi ala raqabati kulli waliyillah. My feet are over the shoulders of all the awliya of Allah. So this is going to happen later on. But in advance, because I saw this whilst I was in seclusion, I was in that mood, Allah Ta'ala showed me this is going to happen. So I surrendered my shoulder as well for the one who will be coming after me, whose rank is such that his feet is above the shoulders of all the awliya of Allah. Subhanallah. So we are talking about that saint, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, rahmatullahi alayhi, who was foretold by the awliya who lived before him. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, rahmatullahi alayhi, says that once, I think he was about 8 or 10 years old, childhood, and usually during childhood people, uh, tend to enjoy with other kids. So one Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Alayhi himself says that there was a bull and I was just going behind it with the intention maybe to enjoy with the kids and suddenly that bull turned its face towards me and Allah gave it the capacity of speech and that bull said, O oh, Abdul Qadir, you are not born for this. Neither you are commanded for this. Then Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Alayhi ran towards his mother and mentioned this incident. And that was the day of Arafah as per the narration. And then Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he had, he says that that was the turning point of my life. He was a wali since birth. Since birth, he started showing miracles, and this is very well known. But again, during Fridays, the time doesn't allow me to speak much. Turning point in the sense, he started his journey to study further knowledge. Anyhow, a wali of Allah is always an arif, that is, having the Gnostic knowledge, recognition of Allah. And the one who has the Gnostic knowledge, worldly ilm doesn't matter for him. It is very easy for him to understand when he had recognized Allah wa ta'ala. Allah blesses them with different types of knowledges. But apparently Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ali, in order to learn, he selected, he opted the place Baghdad, he was in Iran. Why? Because Baghdad was regarded as the markers of knowledge, markers of knowledge at that time. Many great scholars were living in Baghdad and many great awliya they were teaching in Baghdad. So Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ali, he seeks permission from his mother saying, Oh mother, I need to study further. So I seek your permission. And he had lost his father earlier. So mother, she also knew because she was also a great wali of Allah. Her incident is also recorded. Everyone knows about it. She understood that this child wanted to learn and he has a great future. His maqam is very huge. Then she granted permission and I recall an incident where she also said, Oh Abdul Qadir, after this we are going to meet in Qiyam. So apparently we won't be meeting each other once you leave Jilan and you are settled in Baghdad. And she, as a mother, she gave some pieces of advice and one that, O oh, Abdul Qadir, never ever tell a lie. We all know this incident. 
Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Now he himself narrates this. My mother mentioned this to me. I started my journey towards Baghdad. And we, when we reached the place, then we saw 60 people on rides. They suddenly came and they started looting the people, the caravan of ours. When, when they started the robbery, looting people, ultimately one person came to me saying, Oh son, oh child, what do you have with you? So Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani says that I told him that I am having 40 dinar with me. Allahumma salli wa sallam. Falamma tajawazna hamadan kharaja alayna sittuna rakiba. Sixty people riding they came. Fa'akhadhu al-qafilata. And they took hold of the caravan. They started looting. Famarra bi ahadun. One person came towards me. Waqala li and he told me. Ma ma'aka. What do you have O child? Fa'kultu arba'una dinar. I said I am having forty dinar. And it is stitched by my mother in so and so place. Then he had thought that this child is just trying to play with me and he left and he had informed the other person or other person came to Sheikh Abdul Qadir again asking what do you have with you then Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani says I repeated the same thing which I told the person who came first and he also did not trust on this and ultimately this message reached the leader of that caravan who were engaged in this robbery so the leader came and he asked Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Fakal ma hamalaka, what do you have with you? Then he said that, I am having 40 dinar. Then what made you to tell the truth, whereas you would have hidden that? You would have simply said you don't have anything, we would have left you. Then Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani says that, Fakul tu ahadtani ummi, ahadatni ummi. I have given a word, given a promise to my mother that I will never tell lie, I will always be truthful. Fabaka. Then that the leader of the thief, he started crying. Waqal anta lam takhum fi ahdi ummika. Oh child, you are so much vigilant, so careful on the promise you made to your mother. And we in Alamul Arwah made a promise with our Lord Allah wa Ta'ala and we are engaged in such things. O oh, Abdul Qadir, we are here to repent in your hands now. And all those people repented on the hands of Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Rahmatullahi alayhi. Everyone, all the 60 people, they repented. Subhanallah. And they returned all those things which were robbed by those people to those who were, to whom it was belonging. And again it is mentioned, أَنَّهُ قِيلَ لِلشَّيْخِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ مَا سَبَبُ تَلَقُّ بِكَ بِمُحْيِ الدِّينِ لَقَبًا حَالِيًا He was asked, how did you get this title of Muhyi al-Din? You are the reviver of the religion. The one who allies the religion. How did you get this title? Then Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani says, فَقَالَ رَجَعْتُ مِنْ سِيَاحَةِ لِبَغْدَادَ حَافِيًا I was once travelling on the street of Baghdad. I was on my way. فَإِذَا مَرِيدٌ I saw a person who was ill and who was just lying on the road. He was a very weak person. فَسَلَّمَ عَلَيَّ And that weak person said salam to me. وَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ I also responded to his salam. فَقَالَ أَجْلِسْنِي And that weak person said, Oh Abdul Qadir, make me sit. I am very weak. Make me sit. So Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani says, فَأَجْلَسْتُهُ And I made him sit. And what happened? Suddenly, jasaduhu wasara launuhu safiya. He was seen to be very weak. Once he sat, he was all okay now. He was a healthy person. Fakala atarifuni. He says, Oh Abdul Qadir, do you recognize me? I said, La. No, I did not recognize you. There was a wisdom behind that. Fakala anadin. Oh Abdul Qadir, I am the religion Islam. And I have become weak. That is obviously. In light of the hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in every corner of this century when the religion becomes weak, Allah sends a revivalist, a mujaddid to revive his religion again. So when people start corrupt beliefs in Islam, when they be away from the sunnahs of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they start attacking the excellence of the prophets, of the noble servants, of the sahaba, of the ahlul bayt, when they start 
corrupt beliefs with regards to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with regards to the holy Quran so during every such era Allah appoints a person who is regarded as a mujaddid a revivalist and he revives the deen again so this is in light of the hadith I have become weak now and O oh Abdul Qadir Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has given me life through you so through your preachings through your ma'arifat through your preachings and speeches your education people will start following religion in a proper way they will rectify their corrupt beliefs whatever they had and islam will be followed in a proper manner and faqad ahyani allah bika anta muhyiddin bil yaqeen allah granted me life through you and definitely o oh abdul qadir you are muhyiddin you are the one to revive the deen and sheikh abdul qadir jilani says fan saraftu lil jami from there i went towards my madrasa and suddenly I saw everyone is calling me as Ya Sayyidi Ya Muhyiddin. Oh, our master, oh Muhyiddin. Everyone is calling me, oh Muhyiddin. Falamma qudiyati salah. When the salah was over, ahra'an nasu ilayya yuqabbiluna yadayya qailina Muhyiddin. People after the salah, they came towards me, kissing my hands and calling me Ya Muhyiddin. Oh Muhyiddin, oh Muhyiddin. So how people got to know about this title of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Alayhi. This is by Allah. You know there is a verse in the Holy Quran which I mentioned even last week. Innal ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati sayya ja'alu lahumur rahmanu vudda. Indeed those who are the pious servants of Allah. Allah creates love in the hearts of the people for those pious servants. So this is created by Allah. Allah made the people to call saying Ya Muhyiddin when they saw Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. And again, another incident is narrated. وَحُكِيَ أَنَّ أَبَلْ مَعَالِي أَتَى الشَّيْخَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ وَقَالَ إِنَّ بْنِي لَمْ تُفَارِطْهُ الْحُمَّا مُنْذُ خَمْسَةَ عَشَرَ شَهْرًا A Shaykh came to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. A person came to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani saying, O oh Shaykh, my son is having fever. For last 15 months, over a year, for last 15 months, and his fever doesn't seem to go. He came and said to Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullahi Ali. Then Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani says, Pull fi udhnihi, go and tell on the ears of your son that Abdul Qadir says, O oh fever, go towards the place which is called as Hilla. There's a place Hilla in Iraq. O oh Abdul Qadir, Go and tell in the ears of your son that O oh, fever go towards Hilda. And suddenly he got cured. Once he mentioned the name of Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ali. Later they got the message from that area Hilla that there were many Shias living. And Shias, Rafudi, Allahu Akbar. They are engaged in insulting Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's noble Sahaba. They slander Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq. They slander Sayyiduna Umar ibn Khattab. And some Shias, they have a belief that Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu is the Nabi and Jibreel alayhi salam made a mistake on the command of Allah and he went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to give the wahi. So which is again kufr. And some of them, Rafudi had, has this belief as well that Quran today, what we find 6,666 verses like, Actually, the Quran had 17,000 verses. Hazrat Sayyiduna Uthman radiallahu anhu destroyed the rest of the verses. Whereas Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafid. We are the one to reveal the Quran and we are its protectors. So there can't be a change of even a letter. And they change over about 11,000 verses. So this belief is kufr and calling a non nabi as a nabi is also kufr. And slandering Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu is also kufr. So later they got to know that that was the place where many Shias were living and this fever or this waba, this bala reached that area. Allahu Akbar. And again, a last incident, but I don't think the time would allow me, but let me try to concise this. He had a khadim whose name was Khadir. Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani says, وَرُوِيَ أَنَّهُ قَالَ It is mentioned, it is narrated that Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani told his khadim, li khadimihi khadir, whose name was khadir. اِذْهَبِ لَا الْمُوسِلِ O khadir, you go to the city Mosul, where Hazrat Yunus alayhi salatu was living. This is also in Iraq. وَفِي ظَهْرِكَ ذُرِّيَّةٌ 
And oh my Khadim, Khadir, you have so many children in your taqdeer, in your destiny. Oh, this has not yet happened. But Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilan is mentioning in advance. Oh Khadir, you have so many children in your destiny. You go to Musil, awwaluhum zakarun, and the first who is going to be born will be a boy, will be a male. In advance, Sayyidina Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullah Ali mentioned. And he says, Ismuhu Muhammad. Your child's name will be Muhammad. Yuallimuhu al Quran, Rajulun A'ajamiyun A'ma, Ismuhu Aliyun Baghdadiyun fi Sabati Ashur. O Khadir, O my Khadim, the son will be born, the first son whose name will be Muhammad. He will recite the Holy Quran at the age. Uh, he will complete the recitation of the Holy Quran in seven months. And his teacher from Ajam, he will be a blind person and his name would be Ali al-Baghdadi. The teacher of your son will be Ali al-Baghdadi who will be apparently blind and he will teach your son the Holy Quran in seven months. وَيَسْتَكْمِلُ حِفْظَهُ وَهُوَ بُنُ السَّبْعِ سِنِينَ بِلَا نَظَرْ And your son will complete حَافِظُ الْقُرْآنِ at the age of seven years. And he also says وَتَعِيشُ أَنْتَ أَرْبَعًا وَتِسْئِينَ سَنَةً وَشَهْرًا وَسَبْعَةَ أَيَّامٍ بِلَا خَطَرْ Oh my Khadim Khadir, you are going to live in this world for 94 years, one month and seven days without any illness. 94 years, one month and seven days without any illness. What a mood. And you will leave this world where? In Mosul? No. The Ardi Babil. In the city Babil. Babylon, you will die in the city Babil. فَكَانَ جَمِعُ ذَلِكَ بِلَا تَفَاوُتْ كَمَا ذَكَرَ And the narrator says, all whatever foretold by Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani happened as it is was mentioned. As it was mentioned. It occurred. So these are the karamat Allah has bestowed upon our mashayikh and the great leader Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. And don't think that how is it possible? This is possible. Why? Because Allah wrote the taqdeer of the people in the divine tablet. Not because Allah will forget. The scholars say Allah wrote in the divine tablet for the angels and the, for the pious person to see what is the destiny of the people. This is why Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani says, which is in the next hikayat, that my eyes are always on the divine tablet. So Allah has given such powers to his awliya. This is why we pray to Allah Ta'ala always saying, Ya Allah, you are the one who forgives. You are the one who fulfills our hajat. Definitely what we are doing is right. But when we present the wasila of these noble servants who are bestowed by Allah himself, that Ya Allah, you have given such powers to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, that by his dua you change the destiny of the people. Ya Allah, I also ask you to remove myself and my family and entire Muslims from the bala and musibah by the barakah of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. So always try to make duas by presenting the wasila of the noble servants of Allah because in light of the hadith, Allah removes the calamities through the excellences of awliya of Allah wa ta'ala. And this is said by whom? Not me, you or our scholars. No, these things are mentioned by Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who came in this world to teach us the real tawheed, the oneness of Allah, the one who came to eradicate shirk and kufr. He is advising us, he is mentioning us that Allah removes the calamities through the pious servants of Allah and Allah is granting you risk and victory through his pious servants when it is mentioned in the hadith why to deny this fact so we pray to allah ya allah you have given such powers to sayyiduna shaykh abdul qadir jilani so we ask oh allah by the barakah of sayyiduna shaykh abdul qadir jilani grant all of us the firmness in our iman in our aqidah ya allah as mentioned by the son of allah hazrat rahmatullahi alayhi towards sayyiduna ghafi adam that جو قسمت ہو میری بری اچھی کر دے جو عادت ہو بد کر بھلی غوث آدم او غوث العظم you pray in the court of Allah that if my destiny is in a bad state 
you can pray to Allah to change it for the betterment. And all whatever the bad qualities I got in myself, O oh Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, pray to Allah that dosa change into good deeds. Allah Akbar. Ya Allah, by the barakah of Sayyidina Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, bless all of us and especially grant safety for the people of Palestine and the Muslims living all over the globe. Ya Allah, grant all of us the sweetness of Iman, the life in the state of Iman, the death in the state of Iman, and the vision of Qutb al before we leave this world. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.